Right, there are a few formulas here that can be used in many disciplines. For example, the first one's growth and decay, so that could be biological or in chemistry, perhaps. And then the appreciation and depreciation can be used in a lot of fields, a lot of business applications to that. Um, basically, growth and decay can, basically, if something gains or loses parts of it, for example, carbon dating is used for that, or radioactive types of things will obviously be losing a lot. And appreciation and depreciation is used, well, appreciation used to be used for housing, but, well, lately that hasn't quite been working that way. Appreciation means it gains value. And depreciation used, uh, probably the best example for someone of your age would be a vehicle. Your vehicle loses value. Uh, basically, every day it's worth less than it was the day before. So these are very general formulas, so let's kind of talk about what these things stand for. E, that number right there, is the E that you learned the other day, which stands for 2.71828, so forth and so on. It's a number that your calculator is going to keep track of for you. So let's figure out what the rest of these things are. N is basically how much you have to start with, how much of something. Could be grams, could be kilograms, who knows, but it's how much of something you start with. Y is then how much do you end with? Do you agree you could gain or lose? You could have more than you started with. You could have less than you started with. Okay. T is time. And that time kind of has to be speci specified by the problem. It could be days, years, centuries, who knows? And K is basically a constant. You may think, well, why'd they choose K if it's a constant? Well, I think they didn't want the C to look just like the E and all those types of things. Uh, and then somebody last hour asked, so if these formulas are so related, how come they don't look more familiar? Well, they came from two different disciplines, and so they came up with their own letters. That's why they look quite a bit different. Okay. So with that in mind, using that other formula, does anybody want to take a chance at what P is? Is that in the same location as what in the other one? Start. Yeah, that's how much it starts with. And V sub n, the reason I, that they wrote it that way is it kind of means new value, or we could say here how much you end with. So those two things are located pretty much in the same spot in both equations, so that's kind of nice. Yes, Deborah. Uh, the formulas are very closely related to answer because the question was, you know, why do we need to know both? Uh, again, it depends on what field that you're looking at. If you're looking at growth and decay, you're definitely going to use that formula. It's very specialized for that particular type of problem, where the second one, depreciation and appreciation, is set for more of the value, like monetary value. Okay? Because the one here is just A1, basically makes it kind of more of 100 than 100%, which helps you solve the problem. Okay? And R is a rate. You might want to know, uh, normally written as a percent when you write it. Did I say that for K in the previous problem? No, I did not. K is written as just a decimal. Where rate is normally written as a percent, but if you're going to use a percent in a calculation, you write it as its decimal form. Right? And N is really the weird one. Um, it's basically number of years, or you could say time, again. But again, they come from two completely different disciplines, and that's why they look very different. And again, that one that is in the formula, it just stands for one. That's all it stands for. Uh, the hardest part for some people is figure out which formula are you going to use for the problem that you're given. So let's take a look at the first one and figure out which problem we might want to use. Why would you use growth and decay? There's several reasons, but the probably most obvious Okay, it's a science type problem. I would say they give you K. And and that's the one that has K in it. Okay. So there's your formula. Let's find out if we know enough information in this problem to even solve it. Well, we know E is that number our calculator is going to save for us. Does anybody know Y or N, what it would be for this particular problem? Austin? 
Austin says n is 500. Is that how much we started with, was 500? Yes, it is. So the bigger number is actually going on the inside. Well, that's kind of strange. And y is, Austin said, I believe 200, which is correct. E is, well, E. Does it make sense that k is negative and we have less than what we started with? Do those seem to go hand in hand? They kind of do. Mm -hmm. So if k is positive, we're going to be gaining. Where here, we are definitely not. The very first thing I notice in this problem is that there is a variable in the exponent. Don't get too far ahead of me here because I'm going to be very specific as to which logarithm we're going to want to use for this problem. But I really don't like where the 500 is. Is there any way to move that? Divide by it. Yeah, divide both sides by 500. Get it out of there. So basically, two-fifths is what we have over here, otherwise known as 0.4, for those of you that want to write it that way. I'll probably just write it as two-fifths. We still have a variable in the exponent. I'd like to get the variable out of the exponent, which means we have to choose a logarithm. Common logarithm is log base 10, this one right here. What's this one right here again? Natural log. What's the base on a natural log? E? Do you think it might be helpful to have a base E involved with our problem right here? So let's use natural log, and I'll explain why as we go through the problem. So let's take the natural log of this side and the natural log of that side. Natural log of two-fifths, is that something you should know off the top of your head? No, no most definitely not. We're going to let the calculator take care of that. So natural log of two-fifths, calculator, that's all you. And then what can we do with this negative 0.377t then? We took a logarithm of some kind, right? So where can I put it if I so choose? In front. And then it's the natural log of e. Now somebody in the other class was very quick to point out what the natural log of e should be. Might need a little help. Natural log really means log base e, and we're taking it of e. What's log base e of e? Yeah, that's 1. So natural log of e is just 1, which is why I chose to take the natural log in this problem. So if you're ever given the growth and decay formula, which logarithm do you suppose is the best to take? The natural log, because it's going to save you time. Okay, so we've got this natural log of 2 fifths over here. we got a negative 0.377t over there. We need to get t all by itself. So what are we going to do? Yeah, Michelle said, let's divide. Negative 0.377. And now, you're probably very thankful of having the calculator. Because again, yes, this done about 500 years ago would all have been done by hand. Now, when you type that into your calculator, make sure that you put parentheses around the two-fifths, and then divide by the negative 0.377. This problem doesn't say where to round, so we can round out a ways if we would like. Anybody supremely confident in their answer? Lucas? Now, how did you know it was days? Yeah, it said in the problem that it was days, exactly. So that means if I had 500 grams of this on Sunday, Today, I only have 200 grams. I would strongly recommend you stay away from that particular substance. Because you're probably not going to feel real good if you get too close to it. That is very radioactive. Any questions how we got 2.43 days?
Any question why we chose that particular formula? Okay. So that's more of a science application is this particular formula. Nothing? All right. Any idea of which one we should use this time? Probably by default use the other one, right? Just because? Well, let's read it though. It has the word appreciation right in the problem, so we probably will use the second one. And that one is what? V of n equals what? The P. And that how they write it. Does anybody know any of those values for this particular one? Does anybody know V sub n or the new value? What would that be here? Awesome? Yeah, 117,000 is correct. P or the start value. Where did this start? Yeah, 65,000. One is just flat out one. Plus, do we know R? Exactly, that's what we're looking for. And N normally is time in years, and here it would then be five. Do you notice, obviously it's a different formula, but do you notice a difference between this one and the last one? Do you think that we should use natural log in this problem? Why not? For one, there's no e, and for two, there's no variable in the exponent at all. So should we use any logarithm for this problem? No. I'm hoping you're starting to get to the point where you can notice the difference of when you're going to want to use it and when you don't. So no <laughs> logarithms. All right, so what should we probably do first then? Yeah, let's get the 65,000 out of there. And basically, these zeros are just cross off. So it's 117 over 65. That actually comes out to a halfway decent number if you divide it. Anybody got that? 1.8 equals 1 plus r all to the fifth. Now, somebody in the last class decided that we should take 1 plus r to the fifth power. I told them that was a bad idea because that would be 1 plus r times 1 plus r times 1 plus r times. 1 plus r times 1 plus r. That would be extreme foil. And just keep going. Really bad idea. And then they came up with a slightly better idea. So, yeah, why don't we take the fifth root? Yeah, let's get rid of the five that way. Now, what that brought up was a problem with knowing how to do that, because this side houseifies. People weren't sure how to do the fifth root of 1.8 on a calculator. So if you have the, the ones we have, the, the one you're going to look for, the key you're going to look for, is the key that looks like that. That particular key on your calculator will let you take any root that you need. So for this problem, you would type in the 5, then you would hit that button, and then type the 1.8. That 5 basically takes the place of the x, and it'll take the fifth root of 1.8 for you. You're probably going to have to round that decimal, though. I don't think that's going to be very pretty. Anybody have that decimal? Anybody been able to get that? Rochelle? 1.1247 is pretty good, and that's about where we've been rounding, right? So we'll stop with that. So what does that equal now? Equals 1 plus r. Very good. So you're saying 1.1247 is not the answer? So what do we got to do to get the answer? Minus 1. Yeah, so minus 1. Well, minusing 1 there, that's pretty easy. So r approximately equal to 0.1247. But what did I say earlier? What did I say about R? Oh, R is going to be written as a percent when you write it out. So we'll say 12.5%. Because all you got to do is move that decimal over twice. And actually, believe it or not, before the bubble burst, so to speak, that's about what people were getting per year on their house. A 12.5% rate of return, which is unbelievable. And that's kind of what caused part of the problem is they were getting too much. So do you see the difference in the equations? Now, does that mean if you're using this formula, you're never going to use logarithms? No, I could ask you for an 
years one of these times, and then you'd have to use a logarithm. I wouldn't use natural log on this particular one because there's no e. Right? Any questions? Okay, why don't you read that next one real quick and see if you can figure it out. So I guess the first thing we should probably figure out is which which uh, formula are we going to use? Why the first one? Oh, decay. Oh, okay. But doesn't it seem as though this one's missing a lot of information? Now, a lot of people want to use 14 here. Carbon 14 is just an isotope of carbon that happens to have two more protons than electrons. Because it should be carbon, carbon's 12, that's how you know there's two more positive than negative because it's 14. All right, uh, it says half-life. Well, what does half-life mean? That means if I gave you two grams of it in 5,760 years, you'd have one gram. Is that slightly different than the problem we had earlier where it was two and a half days where more than half of it was gone? So you think carbon's maybe a little bit more stable than the element we had earlier? Eh, just, just a tad. So we know that half of it will be gone in 5,760 years. So where do you suppose 5,760 is going to go? Where are we going to put that? In time. Th that's how long, right? So we know that's going to go here. But what we don't know, well, we know E. We definitely don't know K. We kind of know those. I know whatever I start with, I better end up with half. So Sierra, you got some ideas there? Exactly, just make up a number for n and then just make sure you put half of that number in for y. So what's probably the two easiest numbers to you? Two and one, exactly. So wait, where's the two go? For inside, yeah. So two goes here. Did I end up with half of what I started with? Yeah. Could you have used 10 million and 5 million if you felt like it? Yeah, but let's face it, one and two are the easiest numbers. And e is e, k I don't know, and that's really what I want to find out anyway. So that is basically what we want to solve for is k. So we're taking a look here. What is probably the most logical first move? Yeah, get the two out of there. Oh, look at that. It's a half. How about that? No way. So one half equals e to that. Variable. In the exponent. Tabitha. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I moved it to the back. I'm sorry. That the K went to the behind. Um, hmm. Very well, the next one, we're going to want a logarithm of some kind. The most logical choice is log base E, otherwise known as natural log. Natural log of a half. Is that something I expect you to know? Most definitely not. But what I can do now is I can take this and put it out front. And then somebody in the last class said, do you even have to write the natural log of E anymore? Well, that depends. Do you remember what that is? It's 1. So then do you have to? Not if you remember what that's really just 1. No. So to get k all by itself, I'm going to want to divide by 5,760. I'm going to guess negative on that one. And you're going to have to round out their ways, I think, on this one. We'll go to five decimal places. How did I know it was going to be negative? Okay, not what I was looking for. Lucas said because natural log of one half is going to be a negative, not what I was looking for. I lost value here. It's half life. It's decaying, so it's going to be negative. Was what I was looking for. And does anybody feel supremely confident in their answer? Yeah. 
Deb, well, how about you share your answer then? Yeah, something's not correct there. Emily? Yep. K is negative point zero 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 one two. got that this time? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to see what you're typing in. Now, that's just what K is. Did we answer the question? Okay, if you get negative 1.2 and then there's a big E at the end, a negative 4, that's scientific notation, which means negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4th, which means move your decimal point over four places which means you get negative point zero 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 one two. <laughs> yes, as Rochelle has translated, that means don't use the fancy calculator if you're going to get confused. It says to find a formula. We almost know everything now, so now what we're going to do... There is your formula for carbon dating. Because carbon-14 is the isotope they use for carbon dating, meaning finding out how old fossils are. Obviously, their K is a little bit more accurate than the K we have. We solved for K for carbon-14. Nope, they wanted a determine the decay formula for carbon-14. We now have the decay formula for carbon-14. So now I could give you a carbon dating problem, say, the next example. So why don't you take a little time now to attempt the next example now that you have the formula that will help you solve it. Okay, let's see how you did. And of course, those of you that might be listening to these notes should probably actually take the time to try this one before you listen to it. But how old is a fossil that is one-fifth? This 14 up here is just telling you it's carbon-14. That's how isotopes are actually written. Okay. And it's C because that's carbon. All right. So it's one-fifth. So we got to figure out we're probably using that formula. Uh, obviously, time we don't know. E is E. That constant is right there, negative point zero 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 one two. But we have to figure out, once again, those two numbers. As long as y is one-fifth of n, it doesn't matter which ones you choose. I would have personally chose five there and one there because one is one-fifth of five. Uh, some of the other people have said, why not use one and one-fifth? That works as well. Whichever way is going to work out for you. So now we're going to get rid of that five. And there you go, one-fifth. So one-fifth is right there. So now what are you going to want to do? Get the variable out of the exponent. Best choice here is the natural log. Because then that can go out front. Natural log of one fifth, yeah, we're not going to know that. And basically it becomes, because natural log of E is 1. Very good. And so now all we have to do is divide by that. Now I have an interesting question. How is it that some of you that gave an answer had a positive answer when you're taking the natural log of one-fifth and dividing by a negative. Because the natural log of one-fifth is going to be negative. negative. So it's actually a negative over a negative, which will end up positive. And I believe I heard the correct answer out there. Right around, if we rounded the nearest year, Years old. Actually, we'd have to add a, another comma and a few more zeros. But other than that, no. It's not a dinosaur bone. <laughs> yes, Emily, did you have a question? No? Any questions? 
Okay.